So it's commonly said that Windows is a form of spyware. But how bad is it really? And what is it really sending home? That's what we're going to learn. One of the things, I've seen a lot of videos that will simply show that Windows sends a lot of requests, but what they don't know, with a custom SSL certificate installed on the VM, it is possible to actually find out what it is saying, not just that it is saying. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to see what actions in Windows trigger calls and what data is actually sent. So first of all, the main one that people are probably a bit alarmed to learn is it doesn't matter if you're doing anything online or not. If you type anything in this box on Windows, look what happens. So let's say you want to open up Paint. Paint. Okay. Now note all these API calls. Now it's pretty obvious that this is uh, going somewhere. We can tell pretty clearly this is Bing, AS, API, Windows, Cortana, Pane. Okay, so how does this actually work? So a bunch of, bunch of codes, this is just for authentication for this API. A cookie, okay, that's another way of identifying. Uh, the user agent, which is, not, which is totally standard. And here we go. So our language, of course, and our country. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what these are, probably just UUIDs. And if we go to the response, we can see a few things. Ranking signals, suggestions. So this is, if you were using a web browser, this would be what the Omnibox would show. And it kind of correlates. We got paint, paint, uh, CCLs. Event counts. Okay, this is, I guess, like the AI's confidence in what we want. Uh, resources. Okay. Suggestions. And it seems that this is only what is pulled from the web, but it means that there is an API call going every single time, which is not great. Uh, it also, with a prefetch confidence, I, it would preload it to make it faster. Now we can see if we can trigger that with something that is more likely to be an internet. So if you ask, if you put YouTube in, okay, prediction shown. Uh, oh, and it does pull that up. This is the actual uh, first query that triggered the second one. Uh, suggestions, additional info text, video sharing platform, okay. And that is something that comes from this. And then if we go down, we can see the prefetch confidence. And that is what triggers it actually calling the Bing search and opening that page is if the prefetch confidence is high enough. Now, I'm not sure if we can open Copilot without a Microsoft account, but let's see what happens if we do. What's good pizza near me? And I don't know wh whether it's going to use my real location or the... Uh, oh. <laughs> I guess I will never know the answer because I hit my uh, conversation. So let's see what else might trigger uh, hits. So does... So what other ways of opening programs? We can hit Windows key L. No hit so far. Now what if we open a program? Okay, opening the command prompt doesn't doesn't trigger. Oh, oh, okay, that goes to small screen, and now we're sending a bunch of stuff off to install Office. Now I'm gonna guess that's just because I recently installed this VM. That's probably not actual. So if we wanted to actually open Paint, oh, instant hit there, positive, but that felt too convenient. Okay, oh, Meta Services. Whatever that is doing is quite encrypted. Now let's open up settings. Oh, instant hit. Oh, and that's to get the tips, uh, but it actually didn't work. So now let's, let's see. So for example, some people think that Windows is phoning home because Microsoft seems to know uh, the popularity of various personalization settings. So let's try and see if that's true. So one simple thing we can do that a lot of people on Windows 11 will do is we can move taskbar to the left. Okay, no hits so far on that. Doesn't mean that they don't... Oh, didn't work, okay. 
so far so good. Now, of course, what we can't so easily prove as well with telemetry is if it's not being sent instantly but being rolled up, that could still happen okay. These are just apps that are silently installing in the background. Happen Now, what if we open File Explorer? Uh, now, of course, because it's got OneDrive built in, that triggers a call, but nothing else seemingly problematic. Metadata S. See, I don't. Oh. I don't know what that file is containing. Looks like. Oh. Okay. Okay, let's take a closer look at this file. Now, I don't know why it's not showing up properly there, but it does here. Okay, device metadata batch request. So it's just sending some information that's generated a hardware ID. Local print queue. Okay, nothing super interesting, but this meta services domain is probably at least a part of where some of our data is going. Now, I guess the next interesting question, now that we've uh, determined that Windows spying does not seem to be fake. Oh, <laughs> whoosh. Let's try out some of these uh, anti-spying tools. So if you download ONO Shut Up 10, which is one of the more popular ones that claims it can make Windows 10 not do this. Let's see how well it works. And of course you're going to have, there, there's different kinds of spying and some of it you might be more okay with. Like small screen, for example, is quite, uh, you know, that's going to send files that's never seen before, but that's for antivirus, that, that's a lot more desirable than say for advertising. Type transmission of typing information. That's a bit concerning. Now let's see if we can, can we reproduce this? Okay, so far so good. But that is concerning if that is ad... Okay, no, it's just more updates. Suggestions. Uh, I, I don't care, this is VM. So yeah, we we'll definitely want to get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. Now that we saw, that was actually something we saw happen over the wire live. Disable, suggesting to finish setup of device, okay. App notifications, local language. Well, I don't use the software keyboard, but if you do, you might not want to turn that off. Okay, disable access to local language for browsers. No, I'm not going to kill that. Uh, I, I don't find that to be necessary. Uh, most websites can tell you're, you speak English, but it probably doesn't matter anyways if you don't use Edge. Okay, disable storage of clipboard history. Disable app access to user account information, yeah. Device location. Yeah, if you're using a desktop, disable that. If you're using a laptop, maybe not. Uh, these two, I will leave. I, I don't use voice commands. These are not Windows related. These are just going to be in this. Matter. Yeah. I, I don't like synchronization of Windows settings for a lot of reasons. Disable Cortana. Okay. Yeah, I don't use Copilot, but if you do, you might want to leave that. Yes, this is, this is, I think, some of the worst vendors. Oh, did we just get a hit for that before we even ran it? Now, this is how we kill... But yeah, the, you might find that useful. And my, my general like pragmatic view is that a lot of this is kind of a trade-off. Like I'm not personally that worried about all of this information, but I'm also not thrilled about this level of collection. Now let's see, local machine. Yes, this is. This is another one you should not disable if you have a device that uses it. I don't. 
Yes. Don't want any of this. Now this is the app privacy buttons to be clear. These are for apps, not directly windows. So I'm not as concerned. Uh, we, yeah, definitely say no to that. The rest of these are kind of homeless. And these are all going to depend, like disabling online speech recognition. If you use speech recognition is probably not a good idea. Another one you probably do not want enabled. This one as well, this is basically it will allow your computer to upload to other computers. I, I don't know why that is a default enabled other than it saves Microsoft money and bandwidth. This one probably don't want, I would not enable the rest. Updates are important for security. And these it just depends. I, I use it. Some people don't. Uh, yeah, these are useless. In my opinion, get rid of that. Uh, and that should be good to go. Now that we've set this up, let's reboot. Okay, so we still getting a few live hits. Now let's try typing something in Stone Menu again. Zero activity. So that is no longer being sent over the wire. Now let's try opening. Oh, those are just updates. Okay. Let's try opening our settings app. That still does send a call, but it seems like whatever API this was going to is dead. And now we're getting a hit to being on the settings task. Bar. Okay. That's kind of weird, but definitely less activity. Now let's just see what our telemetry settings. All of this is off. Yep. Good. And you can also ask them to delete it. No, that doesn't send any request. Okay. Now none of this is, oh, oh, something, something got hit up. It throws an error. Okay. So it seems, it definitely seems like we're getting a lot less activity. Uh, let's try opening task manager. Of course, when you open edge, you're still going to get a ton of hits, but that's more acceptable. So it does seem like ONO shut up does do quite a bit and gets rid of quite a bit. That's going to be all for now. I hope this was interesting in terms of knowing what data does Windows actually collect.